I know it's been a while, and a number of you have reached out to me asking how I've been, and I'm so sorry that I haven't done any videos in, what's it been, like three weeks, almost a month? Ah, you know, I really meant to stay on track with the Sunday videos after I, I wrapped up that first 30 days of the vlog. And it feels like this month has been such a whirlwind. But I have good news for you. Tomorrow, I'm going to start vlogging again, September 1st, which is awesome because I'm going to be traveling all of this upcoming month. So I get to bring you along and all those adventures. I actually did vlogs last time I traveled, uh, last fall, September, um, on the What a Vegan Eats channel. So if you want to see that, I'll link to it down below. I was vlogging every day for that channel at that time. And then I think I stopped around the same time last year. I don't know. Anyways, um, I have a lot to catch you up on. So in this video, I wanted to kind of summarize all of the like top of mind things that have happened since I last did a video. Um, I'm, I've got my, my suitcase here I'm packing. Eva's hanging out. I am going, uh, first of all, I have to point out, I love this shirt. Passion is everything. I got this sweatshirt at an event that I went to. It's actually a little too hot to be wearing it, but I'm about to go to a meditation class and apparently it gets kind of cold in there. So besides the point, I also just got my hair done and I'm feeling like really cool about having my hair done. Oh, I love that feeling when it's like all soft and shiny and perfect. Like don't you just wish you could have someone do your hair every single day? Anyways, enough about my, my appearance and my surroundings. So, um, first of all, I know a number of you are wondering about my grandpa, and I have such good news. My grandfather is still alive. The last video I recorded was actually, yeah, it was on a Wednesday as well. So that was, I think, like, let's just say three weeks ago. And at that time, you know, it was a day where he was doing really poorly, and I thought that day that he was going to go, like, any day. And I actually went to a church group that night and just like decided to ask for prayer, which is something that like is kind of new for me. So I thought, you know what? I didn't even want to go to the group, but my grandfather is a believer. So I was like, I'll do it for my grandpa and I'll get some prayer. Maybe it'll be healing for me. I asked for prayer and I asked you guys to pray. And some of you said you did. Some of you said that he was in your thoughts and I don't know if that's what it was, but something miraculous happened and he improved. Like, I don't know if it was the next day or the day after, but it was like he came out of whatever he was in. Um, and I don't think the doctors had an explanation for it. They don't know why he went downhill so fast in the first place, but they also don't really know why he turned around. Um, he's still in hospice. He's in a really great hospice um, center in New Jersey. And I've been talking to him almost every single day ever since. And it's been such a beautiful blessing to have all this time with him. And since I'm going back to Massachusetts tomorrow, I'm going to see him very soon. Assuming, you know, we're taking it day by day, but I think he's going to be around next week. Um, I have a wedding to go to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I'm hoping to go to New Jersey as, like, as early as next Monday, which is Labor Day. Um, to go spend time with them. And I don't have that many plans back east yet. They, I have like a bunch of things that I want to do, but I just want to spend as much time as I possibly can with him. And I think it's been such a great opportunity to see how precious life is. Um, actually, this whole month has really been like that. I've been challenged in a lot of ways. It's really just been a complete whirlwind. It, Felt like this month went by so fast and yet so much happened. So I don't know. There's been magical days with my grandpa. Like we started this rating system about how he feels because it's kind of awkward to call him every single day because he's not always feeling very good. And so I'm kind of like making small talk. I'm trying to like keep it engaging. Like, I don't know. It can feel awkward even though we'll only talk for like 10 minutes. But um, one day I asked him how he was doing, which I do every day. And I said, on a scale from 1 to 10. And I think he said like a 3.5 or 3.75. And I was like, all right. And then the next day I called him. He's like, I'm feeling like a 5 today. And then I think the next day he might have been like a 6 or a 7. 
And so it just be, kind of became like this thing. Like every time I call him, that's the first thing we discuss is how does he feel? And it was like this special thing. I didn't ever expect it to turn into that, but it just became like our routine. The best thing was probably about a week ago, I called him and I said, okay, how are you feeling today? And he told me he was a 10 plus and there was so much joy in his voice. It was unbelievable. I mean, I, my heart swelled with happiness hearing that from him. It was like the most beautiful thing that I never want to forget because I just didn't expect that. I expected like he would hover around a five, you know, and oh, I just like felt like thank you for this amazing gift that my grandfather is feeling that good. Now, mind you, they've discovered that he has cancer and you know, he's 97 years old. So they gave him six months to live, but who knows? I don't know. It's just that day by day thing. It's about staying present and it's about love. And if anything, this past month or this whole year or perhaps my whole life has been teaching me that about being present and about focusing on love because that's what really matters. The only time we have is right now. And the only thing that really matters in our life is love. And so I'm just trying to infuse my grandfather with this, all the love that I can possibly give him and however much long he has. And just that gift of talking to him, even on the days where he doesn't feel good and even on the days where, you know, we don't have anything to talk about. It's just all about love. So that's the update on him. Um, I keep meaning to edit the video that I recorded with him in December and I, I'm hoping to get that up and it sounds like he might be up for doing another video although I just I don't know what that would be like my sister's visited him a few times and says he looks really weak and he's lost a lot of weight and he you know I don't know I'm a little nervous to see him physically but again it's all about the love I just got to put any of my fears aside and if he feels up for doing another interview maybe maybe we'll do one I just I'm trying to seize like every moment with him so that's that I'm glad to give that really good news Interestingly enough, though, a few days ago, I got some really shocking news. I was hanging out with a friend of mine, and I brought up, I don't know if I want to call him an ex-boyfriend, but somebody who was a significant relationship in my life years ago. Like, we first started dating, like, 10 years ago in 2006, and we dated again in 2008 to 2009. So, you know, we had these spurts of time, and... He was significant in a lot of ways. You know, at the time, I had really, really strong feelings for him. Um, yeah, it was just like very emotionally charged and there were, you know, all sorts of experiences and learning and, you know, he just, he made an impact on my life and it ended really poorly the second time around and I was heartbroken. And um, it's funny, that was like right around when I was starting Eco Vegan Gal and um, it just, it wasn't a great relationship, but I just had such strong feelings for him. and. Um, ended poorly. Somehow we became friends. Um, and then from 2010 to, you know, now, um, we had kept in touch and, um, I would talk to him every once in a while. The last time we talked was April on, uh, wait, March, March. Yeah. On Easter, I reached out to him and he wanted to get together to catch up. And I didn't really feel like it at the time for whatever reason. It just wasn't a priority for me. And that it actually happened numerous times before that, like he, he would try to catch up with me and I just like, it just wasn't a time priority or maybe I just, for whatever reason, I just didn't want to prioritize seeing him. Well, the other day it was with my friend, his name came up and she was like, that's interesting. Um, one of my friends dated a guy with the same name. I wonder if it's the same person. Long story short, we ended up talking to her friend and confirming that it was indeed the same person who dated him as well. And she also gave me the news that he passed away. And that was like such a massive shock because he was such a significant person in my life. Um, not only that, but he turns out he passed away six months ago and he passed away three days after our last text exchange. How's that for timing? So even if we had made plans to get together, I probably never would have seen him. And I might never have known that he had died because we just didn't have any mutual friends. But what a crazy world that his name just randomly came up. 
I said that to a friend. I've never talked about him to her before. And then it turns out one of her best friends also dated this guy, and she's the one that delivers this news. I don't know. My point in bringing that up is it was really shocking. And it was also really interesting timing because I've been focusing so much on my grandfather's imminent death and, like, savoring that, spending time with him, just wondering what's going to happen. And then I get this news, somebody that I really deeply cared for passed away. And there's a lot of lessons in there. I'm still processing it. It was only a few days ago that I got this news. And I don't know. It's it's just worth bringing it up because it's been a big part of this past month. But I think the other thing is, is the importance of letting people know that you care about them, about making them a priority, about staying in touch. And you can't always do that with everybody, you know? Like, I didn't know he was going to die, you know, had I had I known somehow. Like, I, of course I would have seen him. And I don't know if it, it matters. I don't know. You can tell I'm still processing it. But but what, what I took away from that was it gave me a really great opportunity to reflect on back on who I was when we were dating. And like that, t- what's happened in the past 10 years and how I've shown up in relationships, who I've become, so much has changed and yet a lot of things haven't. I actually dug up like all these old journal entries and I realized that like I still have a lot of the same thought patterns and I was shocked to discover that. I, I thought for sure like, oh, I'm so different than I used to know. Like I'm very much the same person it's just like I've matured in little ways and so there's been a lot of opportunity to reflect on elements of myself that I thought maybe I'd made more progress on than I actually have um and it also just really inspired me to to get in touch with people and and to follow up with people that I haven't talked to so I've been kind of starting to do that starting to like reach out to people that I've been meaning to reach out to because the thing with him is like you know he sent me this message in March six months ago and I just kind of took for granted the fact that I would have an opportunity to see him anytime I was like well I don't feel like seeing him now I'll do it some other time I'll get to it later and like sometimes we just don't have that opportunity and that's such stark contrast to like what's going on with my grandpa where like every day I'm grateful that he's alive and every day I, I run the risk of him not being alive every day. I mean, I guess it's always true of us but as humans, but like, I don't know, with my grandpa, it's just so different because like, I'm just like, death feels right around the corner as morbid as it sounds. So I've just been working so hard to, to talk to him so frequently. And it was like the opposite experience with, with this old relationship. And um, I don't know. It might come up in other vlogs, so it was definitely worth talking about. Today, I also had a really phenomenal meeting for my business. I don't know if I've ever mentioned the name of it. I've talked about things that were going on earlier this year, earlier this summer. Um, with It's called Well, well Network. Um, I hesitate because like, it's kind of been like this, not secret project, but I've just been very like keeping it under wraps because there's it's just in development right now. But I've had a few great meetings about it this week. And there was a period of time, too, like right around when I started the vlogs um, back in like June, some really tough, I went through some tough things with the business. And I just went through a lot. There were a lot of things happening at that time. And some of them I'm just not ready to talk about publicly. They're very personal. But, you know, June was, the end of June was a tough time for me. And doing the vlogs is very therapeutic. And I just felt very uninspired with my business. And I was like, maybe I'm not going to do this business anymore. Maybe this is just not going to happen. And now I'm working with some new people on it, and I feel phenomenal. And I guess the point of that is, like, you just never know when things are going to change. And so you have to be patient. You have to trust. And you just have to go with the flow and trust that you're always going in the right direction. Another update for you, because of um, some of the things that were discussed in the comment section or things that I realized through doing the vlogs last time around, was uh, I was talking a lot about anxiety because I was going through such tough times and it was hard to do vlogs and share like all these this emotion that I was having and not 
be giving details as to why because there's a number of things that really contributed to my anxiety and my stress and like all of that. I mean, it was tough. And I'm so glad that I'm like pretty much out of a lot of all of that whatever I was in at the time. Um, but I also recognized that it would be helpful for me to, to do some therapy. I hadn't gone to therapy in years. Actually, I think the last time I went to therapy was right after I ended that relationship with the guy I was mentioning earlier. So that makes it like 2009 was probably the last time I did that. So it's seven years ago. And I think that I put therapy out of my head because I thought it was going to be too expensive and my insurance wasn't going to cover it. And I was like, do I really need this? But I did some research and I found this incredible community clinic um, nearby and I decided to give it a shot. And it, I've been to two sessions so far and they were great and talking about anxiety and like, um, you know, I don't, I don't think I would say I have like super strong anxiety, but it's definitely there. It's definitely present and I get stressed and I have a variety of, of things that I can work through. I think we all can. And so, yeah, going to therapy was awesome. And I just wanted to like bring that up so I can talk about that more frequently. In fact, I was thinking of doing a whole video about some of the things that we were working through. Like in my first sessions, I had a ton of breakthroughs. So if, if you guys want to hear about that, let me know in a comment. I, you know, I'm happy to be transparent about that. But I also want to encourage you to look into it. You know, if you think that therapy could be beneficial to you, which again, I think pretty much everybody can benefit from it. I would really not hesitate to just look around. There are free clinics, there are community clinics, there are clinics where you know, there's counselors in training. You never know what your insurance is going to cover. Like, there's a lot of options out there. There's also a number of online therapy, and I've dabbled in that a little bit. I didn't find it incredibly helpful. I love the face-to-face, -face, but some of them actually do, like, Skype sessions, and Skype sessions can be pretty effective. So there's just a ton of options, and um, I don't know if I'm going to have time to include a ton of notes in the description field tonight. But if you remind me, I can share with you some of the online, um, like medical therapy, all these different like resources out there now where you can talk to a professional in any different elements of your health online. So l remind me if, I, if you're interested, leave a comment and I can, I can comment back with the URL. And again, I'm more than happy to talk about this. I gotta wrap things up because I have to leave here in a few minutes and I am receiving a text message I need to check. Okay, not important. Um, but let's see. I mean, business has been great. I, I was vlogging, you know, towards the beginning of this month about how sponsorships were going. And, like, I have been doing so many, so much sponsored content. I try not – I, I don't want to do too much of it. I feel like I'm definitely in the place where I'm, like, walking that fine line between, like, too much sponsored content. But what's cool is that the sponsors are giving me the opportunity to do all these videos that I've been wanting to do. Like, the one I'm working on right now is a night routine. And my morning routine video did so, so well. I'm so thrilled to do a night routine. And then I'm talking about my water filter. I've got, I just, I got the rebounder, uh, which is like a mini trampoline. And I got, what else? Oh, I'm do, trying out like this new homeopathic stuff for dogs. I'm going to be trying out on Eevee over the next few months. Um, I'm trying out like a new skincare line. Like there's just all these cool companies out there. And I'm just excited to talk about all these subject matters. And it's been great for my business. And I mean, it's been it's been just a whirlwind. I feel like I'm leaving something out in all this time. It's, I think I'll probably wrap it up there unless something comes immediately to mind. I've been working out and eating really healthy, which feels great. I, I'm feeling really confident about the way I look, which is nice because <laughs> at the end of June, too, when I was going through all of that, let's just call it like rubble, all that tough stuff I was dealing with in June, man, my body was suffering. And I, when, I think I've mentioned this before, but when I was in Palm Springs with Kobe, I hit a point where I'm like, I am done with this. I need to start working out and eating healthy immediately. And it's taken, you know, about two months, but I've made a lot of progress. I work out pretty much every single day. I've done all types of different fitness. I got back into dance. I, I've been drinking tons of water. I've been walking and hiking and like bar classes, like all this stuff. So 
I think August 2016 was about a lot of self-love and a lot of lessons. Actually, I will say that August 2016 was all about love. It was love showed up in so many ways with friends, with relationships, with work, with self-love, with, I don't know, everywhere. So many surprises, so many beautiful things. I'm so grateful to do such a positive video because I feel like the vlog series was like, could be in, intense and, and all of that at the time, but I'm, I feel like I'm come out on the other side or at least I'm in just a different place right now. And I'm really, really excited to bring you along the journey. I actually vlogged a little bit today because I want to start a video out tomorrow. And I have some other vlog footage from other parts of August that I might include, maybe some Snapchats, like, I don't know. We'll see, you'll see it tomorrow. But I just wanted to fill you in as soon as possible. Thank you so much for all your love, for all your patience, for all your understanding. I haven't even looked at the comments on this channel for a while, so I'm looking forward to catching up on those. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't like, it's frustrating sometimes when I go dark, when I disappear from my channels, and I hope that you can understand that I'm like really just doing the best I can and have other priorities and I gotta focus on myself sometimes, but I'm always thinking about this channel, I'm always thinking about you, and who knows, you know, I'm gonna take the vlogs day by day, I plan to vlog throughout September, but um, not making any promises, I just wanna at least be consistent so you get at least a couple videos a week. How does that sound? And then if the vlogs end again, I want to get back in that Sunday schedule. So I'd love any feedback from you, any questions you have, any topic suggestions based on what I discussed today. I, I'm really here for you. I feel like you're a friend. So tell me what you want. Tell me what you want to talk about. Let's make it happen. And I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be flying across the country, but you will be receiving a video at some point. Not sure when yet but it'll be there at some point. <laughs> okay, until then.